Hey guys, you know I'm always searching for interesting vintage electronics and this fall I came across this colorful listing on eBay that I just couldn't pass up. I mean, how could I? The seller promised me that in his personal opinion, based on 30 years as an audiophile, this build-it-yourself transistor reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder from 1961 would be a fascinating addition to my vintage equipment system. Well, let's find out. It's almost a shame to build this kit. You can see I have the original box and the packaging is in almost perfect condition. Still, if you know me, you know that I can't wait to get inside this thing and start building it. The box is really quite large. Here's my hand for comparison's sake. And there's this huge cellophane window showing the parts inside. Here we have the housing, base cover, and battery cover, the switch, the deck, the battery box, microphone, index knob, turntable, head cover, and another part for the turntable, the speaker, a motor assembly, and some switches over here. And here it says that the assembly manual is inside on the bottom. And the cover says it's a Futura transistorized tape recorder kit, batteries not included. Uses two D cells and one nine volt transistor battery. And here on the side, we read that you can get acquainted with electronics, build this remarkable new completely portable tape recorder, learn principles of electronic and mechanical engineering while compiling these components into an instrument of the highest quality. Well, I don't know about the highest quality, but it sure looks like it's gonna be fun. And on this side, we again read that it's portable, battery operated, major components are pre-wired and soldered. Ah, that's no fun. And simple step-by-step -step instruction manual and easy to assemble. Now, I believe this kit is from 1961 and it comes to us, we can see in the bottom here, from the Bell Products Company, a division of Futura Manufacturing, St. Louis, Missouri. Let's take the cover off and see what we have here. Looks like this housing and base cover and battery cover is being held together by a little bit of masking tape. Let's see if we can lift that out. It's always such a treat and a privilege to open up these old kits. Remarkable to think that this was on the market 60 years ago and it's never been opened before. Let's see if we can peel off this masking tape a little bit. Disassemble this housing a little. Yeah, that's ripping up a bit. I'm just gonna go ahead and rip that off. And let's see. Okay, that appears to be hinged so the cover can come off. Let's put that aside. And here's the bottom cover. And this appears to be an access panel for the batteries. We have our switch. Very typical design. Put that aside. Our deck. And the head is pre-installed. Looks like a simple magnet to erase. On the front, we can see we have a control for rewind, off, play, and record, and a high-low. That's probably for tone. Here's the battery box. Space for the 9-volt transistor battery and two D-sized batteries. Here's our very neat-looking microphone. Let's see if I can get that out. Yeah, and a nice long cable and a 1-8 inch phono jack. And uh, it's got a nice little lapel clip as well. Interesting. Yeah, it's actually pretty solid little microphone. Nice. Here we have an index knob. Let me see if I can get that out. I can see why this packaging held together so well after all these years. These parts are really well tucked in there on this cardboard. Can't quite get this one. Don't want to break it. Let's work on the turntable. There's one part of the turntable and the other part. Interesting to see how those will go together later. Put that aside. And here is the head cover. Our head cover, ladies and gentlemen. And here's the tape and reel. So they've actually provided us with some magnetic tape on a reel and with a leader intact. Very nice. And this appears to be your standard quarter inch tape that you would find in a reel to reel player, an eight track player, and that sound cartridge player we recently restored. Here's our amplifier. So this kit's gonna be pretty simple and you can see they've already assembled the amplifier. So that's a good chunk of the work right there. And hopefully these electrolytics are still performing okay. I'm sure they'll be fine for this. Here's our motor assembly. Let's go take a look at the motor.
Okay, that was a bit of a struggle, but we got it out. Here's the motor. We have a capacitor here and a coil, and it looks like some corrosion. Looks like the coil may have become disconnected on this motor. I'll have to take a closer look at that later, and I'll report back to you. Here's the speaker. Nice little, looks like a two inch speaker and very good condition, eight ohms at uh, 0.1 watts. Put that over here, keep that away from our magnetic tape. And here's our take up spool. And let me give one more shot at trying to get this index knob out. Gently trying to open up that hole in the cardboard here. There we go. Okay, there's our lever. And what's next? Just our miscellaneous bag of parts here. Let's undo that. See if I can't open up these staples so I can keep the packaging in relatively good condition. There's one staple. Two. Three. And let's get that last staple out of there. There we go. Okay bag of parts we see some uh, some felt pieces uh, maybe there's like a sort of a clutch we have a small potentiometer probably for the volume um, battery terminals wire uh, looks like a knob perhaps for the volume yeah looks good let me put all the parts together so you can see them put the package aside here are all the parts to our kit you may be wondering where the instructions are the packaging promise that they would be included inside the box well, the person I bought this from on eBay had actually separated the manual and put it in protective plastic. Let me show you that now. Here's our assembly instructions. These appear to be the original. Let's take it out of the plastic and take a look. Flip through this real quick. The Futura K49RE tape recorder kit assembly instructions. Flipping through. There's our packaging. Yeah, nice, uh, nice looking manual, nice looking illustrations. Everything is uh, illustrated well. I wonder if there is a close up of that uh, motor assembly with our coil that appears to be broken. We can see it here in this illustration. It does show the coil and it does show two connection points. And I do believe that uh, yeah, one of these was broken. So perhaps this illustration will help me out a little bit. Flip ahead further. Okay, looks pretty straightforward. Uh, on here we have a schematic as well, so that will also help us. Let me quickly see if I can find the motor and that coil. Our motor is, well, I don't see the motor here. This appears to be just the schematic for the uh, tape heads and the amplifier. We'll figure it out. In the back we have the parts list and there was also one additional uh, pamphlet included. Let me find that. Yeah, and that's this, uh, let's see, um, parts price sheet. So we have the parts list here, and separately here's a um, price list. So if you were to misplace any of the parts, you could uh, send in to Futura and order some replacement parts. Let's see what's the most expensive thing here. Yes, for 450, you could order a new motor assembly. Very interesting. Okay, let me get things set up so we can start building our tape recorder kit. Okay, here's our motor assembly, or what's left of it. Actually, it's not as bad as it looks. I showed you that there was an inductor attached to this terminal strip which appeared to be corroded, and indeed it was. And as soon as I attempted to repair the corroded leads, they broke right off. I did make an attempt to repair the inductor by dremeling off the end so that I could have access to the leads. And you can see here that I was able to successfully reveal the lead on this end. On the other end though, the corrosion had gone right into the coil and it was actually corroded inside. So this coil is useless. Now the coil is a 0.47 microhenry inductor. So to replace this, I'll have to order a new one. But as you can see, an inductor is nothing more than a coil of wound wire. So I thought, what if we make our own inductor? And that's just what I've done. And here you can see I've made a homemade inductor simply by wiring this coil around the stick of an old Q-tip. Now the more windings you have, the more the inductance, and the fewer the windings, the less the inductance. And by experimenting a little, I was able to quickly find a value that closely matches the 0.47 microhenries of the inductor we're trying to replace. Let me get out the meter and I'll show you. 
Now you can see how close I've gotten. You can see that my little inductor is not very steady, but it is coming in at about 0 0.43, 0 0.42 microhenries. Very close again to the 0.47 microhenries that we're looking for. So I think I'm actually going to give my homemade inductor a try in the circuit. I think what I'll do is try to encapsulate the coil in some heat shrink to see if I can have a more permanent solution. Let me get this all back together again with the inductor and this capacitor and see how well I do. Okay, I've got the motor assembly all put back together and you can hear that it is working just fine. A little noisy, but that shouldn't be a problem. Turn it over. Uh, let me disconnect real quick to show you. You can see on here the uh, pinch roller is actually assembled right to the shaft of the motor. And uh, fortunately, it's still in good shape, nice and grippy. That did not dry out. Um, here is the replacement inductor, and you can see I've tucked it in behind this capacitor. And uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. I was able to encapsulate the windings of the wire with some clear heat shrink, so it looks good, nice and safe, and is not going to become unwound. Just as a side note, the reason why we have this capacitor in this inductor is because the DC motor has uh, sparks that are created inside when it spins, and these sparks can generate RF frequencies, which can be picked up by the magnetic tape head and also different parts of the amplifier. The capacitor, this 0.02 ceramic, is wired in parallel. Now the coil that I replaced, that's actually wired in series, so the DC is flowing directly through this inductor coil to reduce noise as well. Okay, so now that our motor assembly is all set, let's begin building our tape recorder kit. So I was moving along following the instructions for our kit and it came time to install this amplifier and before I did that I thought you know I really should check these electrolytics. I'd hate to get this thing built only to find out that we have a bad electrolytic and I have to undo all these steps. You can see we have three electrolytics, one, two, and three. This one's a Rubicon and I think they're all Rubicon, so a good quality brand. I did make an attempt to test these in circuit but my results were a little bit inconclusive. So let's go ahead now and pull these from the board so we can test them properly. Let's start with this one on the lower right. I'm going to turn on my fume extractor now so I can desolder this. Okay, there's our first electrolytic. Let's uh, check it out for ESR. This is a 30 microfarad at 6 volts. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, not a good result. Doesn't seem to want to analyze it, saying it's open circuit or low capacitance. Let's get a capacitance meter and see if we can get a reading on capacitance. Okay, this is reading 70 picofarad. Our 30 microfarad is reading as, um, yeah, about 70 picofarad. This capacitor appears to be shot. Going to have to replace this. Not very good. Let me mark here that this is our 30 microfarad at 6 volts. 30. 6V. That's going to go here. Let's remove this one. Okay, now here we have a 50 microfarad at 10 volts. Let's check it out. This one's coming in uh, rather high. Again, it's a 50 microfarad and it's measuring 471 microfarad. ESR is low, but the capacitance is way out of value. Let's try it with another meter. Again, measuring too high, way too high at 506, 507 microfarad for our 50 microfarad electrolytic. This one is shot as well, needs to be replaced. And I'm going to mark that this was our 50 at 10 volts, 50, 10 volts. We had our 30 here at 6 volts, our 50 here at 10 volts. And I previously marked these that this is the positive. You can see there's a red dot here, negative, and I have a red dot here and a black dot here indicating the negative. So I know which way to reinstall these capacitors. Let's remove this final one here. <laughs> Here we have another 30 microfarad at 6 volts. Let's go ahead and test this capacitor now, but honestly, even if it tests fine, we're going to go ahead and replace all of the electrolytics in this machine. Clearly, they're not to be trusted, but just for kicks and giggles, let's see what we get here. So here again, we can see our 30 microfarad capacitor is measuring at a whopping almost 200 microfarad. So yeah, let's go ahead and replace all of the electrolytics on this 
dashboard. Let me see what I have in stock. Uh, I think I should have what I need to do this fix right now. These are the three replacement electrolytics I've gathered to replace our originals, which you can see on top here. The originals had axial leads while my replacements have radial. Shouldn't be a problem though, as I think I can get these leads to fit onto our board. Note that I did test the three replacement capacitors and they test perfectly. Let's get them in our amplifier board. Okay, got the replacement electrolytics installed. Everything's looking good. I also looked over the original soldering that was done on the board, uh, looking for faults. Everything looked pretty good, but I touched up a couple of spots that looked like they might have been problem areas. Note that on the switch, I have sprayed this with contact cleaner already and cleaned it out, so hopefully we won't have any noise with that. Uh, that goes for the other switches in this unit as well, and the little potentiometer. I may not show the uh, actual cleaning of those, but that's been done. The only other thing that concerns me are these transistors. Hopefully they're still performing well. If not, finding replacements can be somewhat problematic, so crossing fingers that we don't have any troubles there. Let's get this board installed into the amp and progress with our build. Actually, let's do that and finish the build in part two. Stay tuned. To stay updated, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell to receive notifications when I release new videos. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'll see you soon.